Great news! With Trinidad Fresh, you get 70% real fruit juice, and it's available in Fruit Punch, Orange, and Apple. Drink, drink, drink Trinidad Fresh! IBN can be viewed on the go now with the Airlink TV app for Google devices. Simply go to the Google Play Store, search for the Airlink TV app, download the app, click on the link and fill out the form. The account activation will be emailed or texted to the user. It's safe as no credit card is needed. The first 30 days are free and you can subscribe and receive a box for your TV to stream the same content. Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys and welcome to Sea Results. You're joining me, Miss Naila, and today we have Creative Writing and ELE. All right, welcome to all our viewers. Um, you know whether you are joining us on the live stream on Facebook by the Sea Results page or IBN TV 8 page, or you are looking at us um, on channel 8 or channel 108, uh, depending on your provider. Welcome, I hope that you all had a great day thus far. Right, um, as we know, we are currently you know doing past papers or practice type papers for ELA as we have covered all the content already right in preparation for the SC exam so all this extra preparation or all these papers that we are doing will help you right in whatever areas that uh, you are having, pro having problems with so as we go along with um, the different sections and the different tasks uh, you will encounter you know or you may become aware of some of your areas of weakness right if you did not know already now just remember um, all these tasks have been covered in detail already and the videos are uploaded have been uploaded in fact on YouTube on our YouTube channel already so go to YouTube subscribe to our C results channel and you know you can go ahead and browse those videos as many times as you like and uh, rewatch them for whatever part of um, the content necessary that probably you were missing Right, so yesterday we, uh, we left out, we actually uh, went on to the graphic, so we were doing a paper and before we ended yesterday, right, we did not have enough time to complete the graphic, so we're going to continue with the graphic and then we're going to go on to poetry and another paper, okay, so let's get started, right, and um, as we go along, right, so this was the graphic from yesterday so what I'm going to do we're going to just reread it familiarize ourselves with it maybe you did not get a chance to view the program yesterday right and just to refresh your minds for those of you who were with us yesterday so we're going to read it and then we're going to open the lines and we want you to call and help us answer these questions okay so we're just going to zoom in on the graphic here and we're going to read it lawn mowers for sale available for purchase from January 10th 10th to 12th excellent work in order slight cosmetic damage Getting on this exceptional value for performance and durability. Cost $1,200. Going fast. Sale for two days only. Contact Sam 543-1800 or 254-1288. Email sam at lawnmow.com. 14 Poban Street, Balandra. Right, and there's an illustration um, as well on this flyer to help you understand it a bit better in case you did not know what a lawnmower was. Right, now we did answer um, a couple questions already. So we are going to answer question 42 42 as where we left off yesterday's right so the lines are going to be open the numbers are going to be up on your screen feel free to call us and help us complete this uh, task right so this question says what is the meaning of the word durability right and we already have a call on the line so let's take this call to help us good evening welcome to see results good good afternoon hi good evening welcome what's your name Javen. hi Javen. how are you today I am going fine on you, miss. I am good, thank you. So, Javan, tell us, what is the meaning of the word durability? Okay, you can go back to the flyer, please. Sure. Okay. Uh, I think durability there means uh, long-lasting. Very good, Javan. That's in fact correct, right? 
Durability means long-lasting or able to withstand damage. Great job. Thanks for your call. Right, so he's in fact correct. Right, uh, next question. There's two ways by which the advertiser tries to convince the reader to buy the lawnmowers. Right, let's take this call to help us. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hi, Hi. afternoon. Hi, good evening. Welcome. What's your name? Regan. Okay, thanks for joining us. So I want you to give Hi. or list two ways by which the advertiser tries to convince the reader to buy the lawnmowers. Do you need so to? They uh -huh. put, yes, yeah, so they put it's an exceptional value. Right. And they put it's, it's, um, it has much durability and it has performance. Very good. Right, so thanks for your call. Right, and we can have a number of answers here. Right, so he said the lawnmowers were going fast, the sale was for only two days, or it was exceptional value, just as our last caller said. Right, um, durable. All of those things, any two will be correct according to the um, flyer or the advertisement there. Right, so that was the end of the questions for the graphic. We did complete the first couple of questions for the graphic yesterday. So we just had approximately two questions here. Now we are going to go on to our second paper. Right, um, in that second paper, that practice actually is not the second, but the third paper, uh, we are going to start over, starting from section one. When we get to section two, Yesterday, we were not able to complete the poem from this paper. So we are going to do the poem when we arrive at section two, and then we'll continue from there. All right, so. Good, so I'm just going to read the instructions for the ELA paper as we usually do. All right, there are two sections in this test with a total of 43 questions. You have 75 minutes for this test. Section 1 has 18 questions, section 2 has 25 questions. You are to answer all questions. Please, guys, do not leave out any questions, right? If a question is worth three marks and you leave it out, that's three marks lost, right? So be very careful not to do that. Work carefully, but do not spend too much time on any one question. Do not begin until you are told to do so. And also, just a point to reminder here, um, if you are having difficulty with any one question, Skip it over, leave it out, and when you get back, when you are checking over your work, then attempt that question again, okay? That's going to save you some extra time, right? So let's go to the spelling task. There is one incorrectly spelled word in each line. Underline the incorrectly spelled word, write the correctly spelled word in the box provided for each line. And as we know, this task is with 12 marks, one for underlining the error, and a second for giving the correct spelling of the word, right? So once again, the lines are open. I'm going to read this paragraph and then we're going to take some calls to help us, right? So, the hikers embarked on an expedition along the northern range. They preferred the challenge of the difficult climb because of the astonishing scenery. The guide was experienced and acquainted with the route. Along the way, he identified poisonous plants and, other, and others that were edible. The hikers were truly fascinated, right? So, let's take some calls to help us. Good evening. Welcome to Series Results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Javan. Hi, Javan. Welcome back. So, Javan, um, the first line there, right? What is our error? Um, um, embarked. Embarked. What should it be? Um, so, you're supposed to say E M B A R K E D. Very good, Javan. Thanks for calling. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Right. So, that is in fact correct. And as we usually do after we have completed down the six. Um, corrections, then we'll go through them one by one. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? My name is Daniela Wilson. Hi, Daniela. Welcome. So we are on line two. What is the error in line two? The error in line four is um, northern. Uh, what is not? What is wrong about northern range? No, sorry. Um. Challenge. Challenge, no. Look at it carefully. Look at the words, word by word. So we already eliminated Northern Range and Challenge. Which other word there can we probably focus on our attention? Preferred preferred right so how should preferred be spelt P R E uh huh preferred 
P R E F E R R E D F E double R E D okay yes thanks for calling right so as we can see guys it's very easy for us um, to select the incorrect word right so what you can do to help you look at each word carefully letter by letter spell it out as you go along so that will help you right so let's go to the lines again good evening welcome to see results hi good evening Kuala. hi good evening hi welcome what's your name Teresa. nice to have you with us so we are looking at line three what is the error in line three scenery yes how should it be spelled s-c-e-n-e-r-y very good thank you for calling all right so that is in fact correct all right let's go to line four good evening welcome to see results Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. What's your name? Jaden. Hi. So, line four, what is the error there? Experience. Good. Spell experience for me. E X E X P E R I E N C E D. Excellent job. Thanks for your call. Welcome. All right. So, experienced. So, I'm just going to hold on there for a caller for line five right in the meantime let's look at what we have done so far the first line embarked right so it sounds or it may sound like um i am as pronounced like that so you have to be very careful right and you have to know it's em rather than i am and we do have a caller for line five so let's take this call good evening welcome to see results hi good evening caller hi hi welcome what's your name Ariana. Hi, Ariana. So, line five, what is the error there? The error, can you please zoom in? Sure. Um, the error is poisonous. Poisonous. How should poisonous be spelled? Um, P-O-I-S- Um, Sound it out. Go ahead. Take your time. O N. Right. O U S. Excellent job, Ariana. Thank you so much for calling. All right. So that is in fact correct. Poisonous. All right. And let's take a final call to help us with number six. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi. Welcome. What's your name? Chelsea. Nice to have you with us. So what is the error in line six? Um, you can zoom in. Sure. Just give it um, a second. Edible. Edible. How should edible be spelled? E D. Uh huh. I B L E. Very good. I B L E. Thank you so much for calling. Yep. Right. So let's just um, take a pause on the calls. Let's go through these. Right. So the first one, as we said, is important that you know. Um, you know when to use em or when to use im right so your prefixes and so on ensure that you are familiar with them second error there preferred uh, is simply past tense and we learned um, all the rules when we are changing verbs to the past tense you have some things or something that you need to do right so you need to um, ensure that you know what those rules are right and if you do, are not familiar with those rules please go back to our videos where we learned all of those rules when adding ed and so on and that will help you out okay right thirdly scenery right um this here simply mispronunciation can cause that spelling error so you have to know how to spell the word scenery right experience we have placed right or replaced that a with an e instead right so all e's no a poisonous again right know your suffix there o u s and edible right again this could be a pronunciation error you have to know how to spell the word edible right so that's 12 marks if you had all those correct all right let's go to task two it's punctuation and capitalization right some punctuation marks and capital letters have been left out in the passage below there is one error in every line. Insert the missing punctuation mark or capital letter. Right. <clears throat> so let's read the passage and then we'll go to the answers. 
More than a thousand years ago, the peoples of Central America chewed chicle. This is the hardened sap of the sapodilla tree. Thomas Adams created two chickled, chickle based of chewing gum, blackjack and chiclets. Adams products were once popular. What could have accounted for their popularity? All right, so let's go to the lines. Good evening, welcome to See Results. Yes. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Hello. Hi, good evening. Welcome to see results. Are you there, Kuala? Okay, so I'm hearing feedback, but I'm not hearing it, Kuala. Guys, please be reminded to lower the volume on the television set and to listen to us on, the, uh, on your telephone rather than the TV, okay? So let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening. Good evening, Kola. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Javen. Javen, welcome back. So, Javen, we're just going to write, uh, what is the error or missing punctuation, a capital letter here? Okay, I'll just read over from the, from the line before sure. to the second line. Go ahead. So, we're looking for the error on the first line, okay? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Take your time. So I think I would say a comma after I go. Very good. Um, anything specifically why you know there's a comma over after the word go? I go because um. Are you there, Javen? Okay, I think we lost that call, right? But I will explain that to you. All right, let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? David. Aidan? David. David? Yes. Okay. Hi, David. Welcome. So, what is missing in line two? What is missing in line two? There is supposed to be a full stop after trickle. How did you know that? What was because your Because the following would have the cup start of the cup letter. Excellent job. Thank you so much for your call. You're welcome. All right, let's take another one. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, Kuala. Welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Teresa. Nice to have you with us. So, help us with line three. Um, it's supposed to have a capital letter. Where? Thomas. Can you say that again? A capital letter. Thomas. Thomas, right? So this will be a capital T for Thomas. Very yeah. good. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Right. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, welcome. Good evening, caller. Okay, and we lost that one there. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Alexi. Nice to have you with us. So help us with line four. Can you zoom in, please? Sure. Can you see line four? Yeah, I could see line four. Okay. It's a top comma by chewing gum. Why a comma? Because there's a list of Right. Things. So you are correct in the sense that it is a list. But which punctuation mark do we use before a list? Is the comma? A colon. A colon, right? That's better. Thank you. You are correct. Right? Right, it's a colon there. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Why a comma? Because there's a list of... Hi, good evening. So you are correct. Hi, Kuala, are you there? Well, just a reminder again to lower the volume on the television set, okay? And listen to me on the phone. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Javen. Hi, Javen. So, Javen, help us with the fifth line. The fifth line, you can zoom in to the... Um, yes. Can we just zoom in on line five, please? Just give it a second. Okay. Right. 
not right now. Now I've seen it. Okay. So I would say uh, apostrophe S for the S and Adams. Very good. Right, so apostrophe S, right? No, S apostrophe. S apostrophe? Yes, miss. All right, okay. Why is it S apostrophe? Because on line, on line, on foot number nine, Yes. they stated that Paul Thomas Adams, so Adams was his last name. Very I good. Excellent job. Thanks for your yes. call. Right, so he was uh, correct in identifying that. And if you just go back to line three or number nine, there they said Thomas Adams, right? Adams being the last name. So therefore, it's S apostrophe. All right, let's take a call to help us to number 12. Good evening. Welcome to C Results. Hi, good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Carissa. Nice to have you with us. Help us with the final line there. A question mark. Question mark. Very good. At the end. Thank you so much for calling. Right, so line one, more than a thousand years ago. That's a dependent clause, so we have a comma there. Line two, we know it's a full stop, hint being that the very next word begins with a capital letter. Right, so this is the end of a sentence. We go to line three, it's the beginning of a sentence here. Right, there's a full stop here which indicates that, so we use a capital T to start our sentence. Also, this is a proper noun, so it should be a capital T anyway. Right, moving on to line four, um, two chicle base brands of chewing gum and they go on to list the two brands. So if you're given a list, you should use a colon, right? And line four, Adams products were once popular. Adams, apost S apostrophe, because Adams is the um, actual last name, right? And lastly, what could have accounted for their popularity? It's a question, so therefore we need a question mark. Again, this was six marks. Let's go to task three. There is one grammatical error in every line. In the passage below, underline each error and write the correct form of the word in the box provided. This task is worth 12 marks. Right, so we're going to read it and then I'm going to take some calls. Nick as well as his father like nature. They go frequently to the swamp but observe the animals. Nick once saw a school of geese. There was a black goose between them which caught Nick's attention. It was the larger of them all. Nick ran down to the water's edge anxiously to get a closer look. All right, so let's take a call to help us with number 13. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Daniela. Hi, Daniela. So help us with that first line there. Can you give me the question? Okay. Sure. So you're changing go to went? Yeah. Um, why is that? Um, by chance, did you look at yesterday's episode? Are you there, Kola? As the end, so mm. Nika as well, and his friend, mm. and his father, sorry. No. Um, I just have a question before you continue, right? Um, were you able to look at yesterday's episode for grammar? Yes. Not, right. So yesterday we had a similar, um, similar line, just as we have here. Um, do you remember what this phrase is called, as well as his father? Do you remember what else is called? Um, no. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to give you another chance and see if you can figure it out, and then I'll help you, okay? Take your time. So I'll give you a hint. It has to do with subject verb agreement. His father? No. So I'm going to help you, okay? So that's all right. Um, take this and ensure that you learn from this example, okay? 
Nick as well as his father, let me just read that again. Nick as well as his father, like Natya, right? They go. So here we have, we have the subject being Nick, and then we have the intervening phrase, which is as well as his father, right? Um, now this sentence can read with or without this phrase. Let me show you how, right? I can say Nick like Natya, or I can say Nick as well as his father like Natya. Now it is easy for us to get confused if we see Nick, one subject here, and then a second subject being his father. Now we are thinking that the subject becomes plural because there's Nick and his father. But really, when there's an intervening phrase such as this, this is one example of an intervening phrase. There are many, many examples, right? We look at or focus on the first subject only, right? So Nick here is singular, one person. So therefore, like I said, it's subject verb agreement. So therefore read Nick likes nature. Like will be changed to likes, right? Like right now as it is, is plural. We have to add S to make it singular, right? So Nick likes nature, right? So your answer, your correct answer should be Nick as well as his father likes nature. Because remember, we are focused on the first subject only. This intervening phrase does not matter. Right? It's not important. We do not need it in the sentence. That is additional information. Right? So hence the reason we are focusing on the subject or the first subject only. I do hope you understand that. We did spend some um, extra time on this rule. We know that it can be, again, confusing or you can easily forget if we don't revise subject verb agreement rules. Right? Um, we know there are lots and lots of rules. As I mentioned yesterday, as a recap, we learned about 17 different rules for subject verb agreement. So please go back and uh, check out those videos just to refresh your memory. And you have to ensure that you keep uh, doing exercises with subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement is really tricky, guys. So it's something that you constantly have to work with over and over to remember, right, um, to get it correct. So in case any other students at home, you made the same um, mistake, you were not able to identify the error, right? That is the error there, like should actually be likes. Right, so we have to underline that one mark and then we have to give the correct the, the correction. Right, so let's go on to line two. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hi Kuala, welcome. Hi. Hi, welcome to see results. What's your name? Good evening. Okay, we lost that call. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Okay, so I'm just going to hold on there. All right, let's take another Hello. call for that. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Are you there, caller? Hi, I'm here. Welcome. Hello. What's your name? Good morning. Nice to have you with us. So help us with number 14. Okay. Is the bot supposed to be two? Two. Very good. Right? So that answer is in fact correct. Or we can Thank have you. so we can have two or we can have and. Right? So let's look at that. They go frequently to the swamp to observe animals or they go frequently to the swamp and observe the animals, right? We have two options there. Any of those will be correct. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Let's take call. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Jaden. Nice to have you with us again. So help us with number 15. Nice to have you with us again. It's supposed to change school. What am I changing school to? Are you there? Yes. Okay, what am I changing school to? What, what is this called? School of Geese. What is a that collective called? collective noun. Excellent, right? So you were able to identify that. So it's not, a, not called a school of geese, but it's rather called... Do you know? No, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm going to help you, okay? 
So yes. it can be called a flock, a flock of geese or a gaggle of geese. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Right, Welcome. but you would have gotten that one mark because you were able to identify the error. So I do applaud you for that. That's great work. Right? Okay. You just need to work on your collective nouns. Thanks so much for your call. Okay. All right, let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, welcome. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello? Hi, welcome. What's your name? I'm Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. How are you? Fine, thanks. Okay, Nicholas. So, number 16, what's the error there? Um, the error, right, is between. And what should it be? Among. And why? Pardon? Why should it be among and not between? Because between is used for two persons and since it's three, right, you have to use among. Excellent job, Nicholas. Thanks for your call. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so great job there as well as to the other callers as well. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi, good evening. What's your name? Good afternoon. Who am I speaking with? Teresa. Nice to have you with us. So help us with number 17. Larger to largest. And why is that? Why is it largest and not larger? Are you there? Okay, I think we lost that call there, but I will explain number 17 shortly. Let's take the final call to help us with number 18. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening, caller. Hi. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Regan. Thanks for joining us again. So help us with the final line Hi. here. You can do me that, please. Sure. Okay, so the error is anxiously, and right. it's supposed to be anxious. Anxious. Thank you so much for your call. All right. Okay. Great. So, right, so let's look at these here. Right, we explained uh, number 13 already to review that lesson um, sub on subject verb agreement. Please go to our YouTube channel, and you will find uh, quite a number of videos on subject verb agreement itself. Right, number 14, simply we said you can have two answers there, two or and number 15, um, you have to know your collective nouns. It's called a flock or a gaggle of geese rather than a school. Right? Between, Nicholas explained that beautifully first. It's not between. Between is used uh, when you are talking about two persons. Among should be the correct um, choice of word there. Right? Three or more. Larger should actually be largest. Right? We are, you're looking at your comparative, um, comparative adjectives. Right? And we use largest when we're speaking about all of them. Larger to talk about two nouns. And anxious instead of anxiously. Right? Um, now, we're just going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue with this paper. Stay tuned with us, guys. We'll be right back. the everyday lowest prices on all grocery items trust low-cost supermarket for the widest variety of quality products at low prices freshly picked fruits and vegetables healthy products for your well-being 
high quality meat cuts and a warm and friendly service. Low cost supermarket, Southern Main Road, Kunupia. Attention all bakers, doubles vendors and roti makers. Try our high quality unbleached bromate free all purpose and baker's flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Shikleisha Limited 665-3336 or visit us at Warrenville, Canupia. Shikleisha Limited, quality you can trust. Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys, welcome back to see results. So just before the break, we complete this section one, which includes spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and grammar of the ELA paper, and now we are moving on to section two. Now in section two is usually comprehension, poetry, and graphic, right? Today we'll only be doing the poem, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do the graphic as well, right? So we are going to go to yesterday's poem, which is entitled The Crocodile's Toothache, right? Um, I just wrote the title very small because um, well space right just due to space right written by Shel Silverstein so I'm gonna go ahead and read the poem and then we're going to go to the lines the crocodile went to the dentist and sat down in the chair and the dentist said now tell me sir why why does it hurt and where and the crocodile said I'll tell you the truth I have a terrible ache in my tooth and he opened his jaw so wide so wide the dentist he climbed right inside and the dentist laughed oh isn't this fun as he pulled the teeth out one by one and the crocodile cried you're hurting me so please put down your pliers and let me go but the dentist laughed with a ho 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 and he said I still have 12 to go oops that's the wrong one I confess but what's one crocodile's tooth more or less then suddenly the jaws went snap and the dentist was gone right off the map and where he went one could only guess to north or south or east or west he left no forwarding address but what's one dentist more or less right so a little bit of humor in this um, poem making it a bit exciting right so we're going to go to the lines and if we need to reread the poem or if you need to reread it when you're answering a question that is fine as well Right, so I'm just going to go to the first question there. Give two possible reasons for the crocodile's visit to the dentist. All right, let's take this call to help us. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Devante. Hi, Devante. So give two possible reasons for the crocodile's visit to the dentist. So I'm going to go to okay. the poem. Okay. Mm. And if you, if you need us to scroll down, you can just say so, okay? Okay. Okay, so one reason is because you have a terrible toothache in right. it. Because you had a terrible toothache in his tooth. Uh-huh. And second reason. Are you there? Are you there with us? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, take your time. And secondly, uh, because it hurt. Okay, all right, no problem. Thank you for your call. Right, so those two answers are basically the same, right? Um, being that it was a toothache, right? He wanted to relieve him, relief from his toothache, or he was hungry, or he wanted to eat the dentist, right? And of course, um, prime answer being that he had a toothache. Right? But you have to give two, of course. Give two reasons for the dentist climbing into the mouth of the crocodile. Right? Let's take this call to help us. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? 
Cheyenne. Nice to have you with us. So give two reasons for the dentist climbing into the mouth of the crocodile. Um, because uh, uh, the mouth of the crocodile was too big and he couldn't see it from the outside. Okay, and? It was, uh, he had to go inside to take out the tooth. Okay, he had, okay, not had it, okay? Okay. Okay, great job. Thank you for your call. Mm -hmm. Right. So, to get to the damaged tooth or to get a, sorry, to get a better view of the teeth or, or inside the mouth to work properly or more efficiently to get a better grip on the teeth. Right, so any of those answers is of course correct. Of course, your answers must be appropriate and making sense as well. Right. Why did the crocodile ask the dentist to put down his pliers in line 13? Let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Hello. Hi, welcome to see results. What's your name? Hi. Hi, who am I speaking with? Can you hear me, caller? Yes. Okay, who am I speaking with? Huh? What's your name? Aidan Aligwan. Aidan. So, Aidan, why did the crocodile ask the dentist to put down his pliers in line 13? The crocodile asked the dentist to put down his pliers because, it, because the dentist was hurting his tooth. Very good. Thanks for calling. You're yes. welcome. So, he was hurting the crocodile or he wanted the dentist to stop using the pliers. He planned to eat the dentist so the pliers would have been uncomfortable. Any of those answers would be correct, right? Of course, the most logical one, he was hurting the crocodile. Right? The crocodile and dentist show different feelings in the poem. Complete the table below to show the different feelings of the characters, right? So you have to complete this table here. So let's look at the table. Characters in the poem, feelings, evidence from the poem. So for the dentist, he was happy. So you have to give a piece of evidence to support that. And the crocodile, you have to tell us how he was feeling and supporting evidence. Right? So let's take a call to help us. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Hi, welcome to see results. Are you there? Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Javen. Hi, Javen. So Javen, um, help us with number one. Number one. Okay, you can go back to the poem, please. Sure. So they said that the dentist was happy and gave us a piece of evidence to show that. Okay. Uh, I'm still looking. Take your time. Oh, right. So what? So evidence to show that the dentist was happy is line 10. And the dentist laughed. Oh, isn't this fun? <laughs> Excellent. And the crocodile, how do you think the crocodile was feeling? Uh, I think the crocodile felt pain. In pain? Okay, so he was probably hurt. So help us with the evidence there to show that he was hurt or in pain. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, uh, uh, right. So I will go to line 12. Uh -huh. and, and the crocodile cried. You're hurting me, so... <laughs> Great job. Right? So thanks for calling. And it, intonation is really important as well when we're reading a poem, so I do appreciate that. Right? So okay. let's go to the answers. Thanks for your call. So the dentist uh, was either happy or happiness, which was given, and the dentist laughed, or oh, isn't this fun? Right? Or he could have said, but the dentist laughed with a ho, ho, ho. Right? So either is fine. The crocodile correctly stated he was hurt. Right? I have a terrible ache in my tooth as he pulled the teeth out one by one, and the crocodile cried, you're hurting me so, right? Or you could have said that the crocodile was also angry, right? Please put down your pliers and let me go. Then suddenly the jaws went snap, and the dentist was gone right off the map, right? So whatever um, feeling or word that you give us, adjective there to describe your feeling, you have to give your supporting evidence. So give a synonym for the word confess as used in line 16. All right, let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Juliana. Hi, Juliana. So give a synonym for the word confess as used in line 16. So we're just going to scroll, right? Great. Line 16 is there for you. So you can go ahead and read it. 
Oops, that's the wrong one, I confess. Right. A synonym for the word confess is admit. Admit, very good. Thanks for calling, Juliana. You're right, welcome. So admit, declare, reveal, disclose, accept, blame. Right? Any of that will be fine. Give two reasons for the poet's use of capital letters in the word snap. All right, let's take this call to help us. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Yes, good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Hello. Hi, welcome to see results. What's your name? Nikolai. Hi, Nikolai. So give two reasons for the poet's use of capital letters in the word snap. So line Hello? 18. Can you hear me, Nikolai? Yes, I can hear you. Can you please lower the volume on the television set? Okay. Okay, yes. Right, so we want to know, let's just read that again. Give two reasons for the poet's use of capital letters in the word snap. So we're looking at line 18, then suddenly the jaws went snap. Right, so. Okay. Um, can you go back on the poem, please? Yes. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Okay, um, to draw, read, to draw the reader's attention okay. and to create drama. Create drama, excellent. Thank you for your call. Right. You're welcome. Yeah, right, so draw reader's attention, surprise the reader, indicate a change in the poem, or to create drama. Great answer, Juliana. What type of person is the dentist? Give two details from the poem to support your answer. All right, let's take this call. Good evening, welcome to see results. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Welcome. What's your name? Jaden. Hi, Jaden. So, what type of person is the dentist? Give two details from the poem to support your answer. So, I'm just going to go to the poem. I think the poem is a mean. Can you repeat that, please? The dent I think the dentist is a mean person. Right. Uh, tell us why. Because Give two the details, right? He laughed uh -huh. at the dentist. Right, he laughed. Oh, it's, oh, oh, isn't this funny? Right, and? And when the crocodile told him you are hurting me, he, he, told, he told him that he still has far more to do. Right. Great. Great job. Thanks for your call. Right, so okay. that's in fact correct. So the dentist could be described as wicked, mischievous, or naughty. He laughed when the crocodile was in pain. Right, he pulled out the wrong tooth. He said he was going to pull out 12 more teeth. Right, and... Or you could have said that the dentist was also gullible or brave. Right, he believed it was safe to pull out the crocodile's teeth. Or he believed it was safe to go into the crocodile's mouth. Number 36, take the figure of speech that is used throughout the poem. All right, so you just tell me A, B, or C. All right, let's take a call to help us. Good evening, welcome to C Results. Let's take another call. Good evening, welcome to C Results. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening, welcome back. Hi, this is Nicholas. So, Nicholas, I have a good question here for you, right? Before you give me the answer, which says, take the figure of speech used throughout the poem, I want you to tell me what is a metaphor, personification, and simile. Okay, a metaphor is a comparison, but it doesn't use the word like or as. A personification is a non-living thing that takes a human reaction, and a simile is a comparison that uses like or as. Excellent job, Nicholas. So with that knowledge, which figure of speech was used throughout the poem? Personification. Excellent job, Nicholas. Thanks for your call. Okay, you're welcome. Right. Nicholas always makes us proud. Right, with those um, great descriptions. So, f of course, we know that the figure of speech used throughout the poem was personification. Right? Which character do you prefer in this poem? Give a reason for your choice. Right? So, this is open to interpretation or your opinion as a matter of fact. So, let's take a call to help us. Good evening. Welcome to see results. We lost that one. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Javen. Hi, Javen. So, which character do you prefer in the poem? Give a reason for your choice. I would say the crocodile. Right. And tell us why. Uh, our reason is that the crocodile, um, the dentist was laughing when the crocodile was in pain. 
and the crocodile came back and and killed the dentist and I think that was the right decision for the <laughs> crocodile to kill the dentist. All right, so he got his revenge, right? Yes. Ma All right, okay, great. Thanks for calling. Right, yes, so you yes. can so you can choose um, either the dentist or the crocodile, right? You just have to tell us or give a proper reason why. So you can say the dentist because he was funny or he was brave or he was fun-loving, right? Um, he lives life on the edge, right? So he didn't really care that he went into the crocodile's mouth. He didn't think of the consequences. Or he could have said the crocodile because he stood up for himself. He didn't let the dentist take advantage of him, just as our caller said. Or he took action when he had a toothache. He was brave to go to the dentist. And that last part there is important as a lot of people are, in fact, afraid of visiting the dentist, right? Good. 38. What is the mood of the poem? Give two quotations from the poem that show the mood you identified. Right? So, let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Right, so, let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Right, so, let's take this call. Good evening. Hi, Welcome call. Are you there? Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello? Hi, good Hello? evening. Welcome to see results. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Juliana. Hi, Juliana. So I want you to give us or tell us what is the mood of the poem and give two quotations from the poem that show the mood you identified. Right, but before you answer the question, I want you to tell me what is mood. What does mood refer to? Mood is mood refers to How the author is making you feel. Very good, right? Or how you feel when you read um, the poem, right? So great. So what is the mood of the poem then? The mood is funny. Funny, okay. And which two quotations will you use to justify the mood given? Two quotations to justify the mood given is... Ah. Ah. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly the jaws went snap and the dentist has gone right off the map. Great. So is that one or two? One. Right. And your second will be? The dentist, he climbed right inside and the dentist laughed. Oh, isn't this fun? Excellent job. Thanks for calling. You're right. welcome. Great. So the mood can be funny, silly, fun-loving, carefree, light-hearted. Of course, we know that mood refers to how you feel when you uh, read the poem, right? Or your passage, right? Um, another term that you have to be mindful of is tone, right? You should also know the meaning of tone. And we did um, differentiate between tone and mood. Right, just before we started poetry. So, uh, or you could say, and the evidence, sorry, will be, I have a terrible ache in my tooth and the crocodile cried, you're hurting me so. Or you can say, oops, the wrong one, I confess, but what's one crocodile's tooth, more or less, right? Or, but the dentist laughed with a ho, 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 and he said, I'll have 12, I still have 12 to go. Or any other line in the poem, a quotation, that refers to the mood that you stated. Right, so excellent job there, guys. So that was the end of the questions for the poem. Now we have one final thing to do and we are going to in fact do that. Uh, we have uh, another graphic to complete, right? So from today's paper, we are going to go to that graphic, right? We are not doing a passage today, however, we're just gonna go to this graphic. So we're gonna read it and then we're gonna answer the questions. Operation Sleepover, your mission 
celebration of Atiba's 12th birthday, 6 p.m. Saturday, 6th April 2019, Berlin Heights, Signal Hill, Tobago. Mystery Games, Treasure Hunt, Movie Marathon. Contact Mrs. Dillon by 3rd April, 639-8372, dillon at gmail.com. Bring your sleep gear. Right now, let's just observe the um, invitation before we go into the questions. You would notice here there's a treasure, che treasure chest, right, an illustration of it. Um, because there was a treasure hunt, or there is a treasure hunt, and to the top you will notice a flashlight, right? I'm not telling you why. And of course, there's the moon with stars and so on. So I'm not going to explain that to you. You have to make um, sense of the invitation and everything presented in the invitation as is, right? Um, again, you can look at that video in graphic on when we started graphic and explanation of what you should be paying attention to in a graphic and that is in fact everything guys let me just point that out right so you have to pay attention to all details given in a graphic so check out that video to get a little more insight about interpreting graphics right so let's go to this first question here using details from the invitation fill in the information here what is operation sleepover and part two when will it be held right let's take a call to help us good evening welcome to see results Hi. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Regan again. So tell us, uh, what is Operation Sleepover? So Operation Sleepover is a sleepover for Charles of Atiba's 12th birthday party. Very good. Right. And when will it be held? The 6th of April, Saturday, the 6th of April, 2019. Excellent job. Right. So simple as that. Right. Yeah. So Operation Sleepover is a birthday celebration or, or a sleepover. When, it will, will it, when will it be held? It will be held on Saturday, 6th April, 2019. Right? Uh, thank you. Identify no, um, two activities that will appeal to children. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hello? Hi, welcome. What's your name? Devante. Hi, Devante. Identify two activities that will appeal to children. Okay. Can you go to the fire, please? Sure. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. The treasure hunt and the movie marathon. All right. Let's try answering that in a complete sentence. Okay. Two activities that, that will appeal to the children are the treasure hunt and the movie marathon. Excellent. Thank you so much for calling. Right. So two activities that will appeal to the children are... And you can have any two of these three, Mystery Games, Treasure Hunt, Movie Marathon. If you were creating this invitation, would you include the image of a flashlight? Give a reason for your answer. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Samir. Nice to have you with us. So did you read the question by chance? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to go to the flyer. Or invitation, rather. Yes. Okay, um, just give me one minute there. Yeah. Okay. No? Okay, just give me one second. We're just going to take a short break, and when we come back, um, we are going to actually continue. Let me just see if I get this here. Okay, great, it's here. Right, so let me go back to that question. Great, so the question was, if you were creating this invitation, would you include the image of a flashlight? Give a reason for your answer. So are you there with us? Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening, welcome. Good evening. Who am I speaking with? Good evening. Good evening, can you hear me? Okay, we lost that call there. All right. Hello. Hi, welcome to see results. Who am I speaking with? Regan again. So Regan, um, did you catch the question? You could just go back to it, please. Sure. If you were creating this invitation, would you include the image of a flashlight? Give a reason for your answer. Yes, I would. Uh -huh. Because it said operation sleepover. When this is sleepover, it means in the night and it would be dark. So you'll need a flashlight to see in the dark? Yes, and okay. for the mystery games, mysteries, do use flashlight. Right, great. That's what I was getting at, right, for the activities prepared. Thank you so much for your call. Yeah. 
Uh, you're right, so you can have two answers, either yes or no, but you have to justify. So if you said yes, because it creates a sense of mystery and excitement, as well as, like our caller said, you'll need a flashlight um, to help or assist with those games. Or no, because some children may be afraid of the dark, and when they see that flashlight, they know it's dark, and they may not be enticed by that. All right, so any of those answers, or any answer similar to that, or one that makes sense, is, will be absolutely correct. Give the meaning of the following words as used in invitation, mission and movie marathon. Right, so let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. I'll be enticed by that. Right, so any of those answers or any answer similar to that. Good evening. Welcome to yeah. see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Um, hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Nice to have you with us. So we want the meaning or give the meaning of the following words as used in the invitation. So the first word is mission and then movie marathon. Right? So, okay. So what does mission mean? The meaning of the word mission is um, to like um, to accomplish something. Very good, right? A task that needs to be accomplished. And what about movie marathon? Movie marathon is um, to like um, a movie marathon is is um. To watch a movie? To watch a movie one after the next, okay? Okay, yeah. Okay, right. Thank you. All right, bye. Okay. See so you next time. Bye. I did not hear that last part, unfortunately. Right? So to celebrate or to have fun, right, was the mission here. And that was something that had to be accomplished. Right? Movie marathon to watch a series of movies. So movies one after the next. Right? Stay two reasons why a child might receive this invitation. All right, so this is the final question for this graphic. Let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Good evening. Good afternoon. Who am I speaking with? Javen. So Javen, um, say two reasons why a child might receive this invitation. Uh, two reasons why a child may receive this invitation is because the child might be, fr might be in a T-Buzz class. Right. Uh, and a second reason would be because uh, uh, the person could be related to Ativa. Okay, no problem. Thank you for your call. That is correct, okay? Right, so okay. two reasons why a child might receive this invitation are they are Atiba's friends or classmates or they need sufficient people to play games, right? Like such as the treasure hunt, right? They okay, man. Thank you so much for calling. Right, or just as he said, maybe a relative as well. Right, so this brings us to the end of the graphic and ELA for today. We are going to take a break and when we return shortly, we are going to get started with creative writing. So stay tuned with us, guys. We'll be right back. For the everyday lowest prices on all grocery items, trust Low Cost Supermarket for the widest variety of quality products at low prices. Freshly picked fruits and vegetables, healthy products for your well-being, high quality.
quality meat cuts and a warm and friendly service. Low cost supermarket, Sun and Main Road, Kunupia. Attention all bakers, doubles vendors and roti makers. Try our high quality unbleached bromate free all purpose and baker's flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Shikleisha Limited 665-3336 or visit us at Warrenville, Canopia. Shikleisha Limited, quality you can trust. Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys, welcome back to See Results. So now you're joining me for creative writing, and at least until halfway through, and then we'll have Suija joining us, right? Um, today for creative writing, we will be only reading submissions from students. So last week's um, assignment on Edmodo class was to write a report, right? Um, we're going to read the topic shortly and get into the submissions. But before we continue, I just want to remind um, everyone, you know, viewers um, on the live stream, be kind, right? Um, we are here to learn. It's a learning community to support each other, right? So we are only, you know, going to be kind to each other. So be very mindful of that. Um, so positivity only, right? Um, so I'm going to get into the task, which was to write a report about an accident you witnessed while on your way to school, right? So we had lots of submissions from uh, for this assignment. Now, we can only read so much. I mean, some students specifically asked or requested that we read their submission. So we are going to try to do so. But, um, you know, if we did not select your submission, it's not because yours uh, was not the best or anything like that, right? We randomly choose pieces to read online. We try to use different students each week, right? Of course, there might be or maybe some students that we have repeated they are students, you know, who perform exceptionally well, and we do take that, you know, um, for students to learn from it, right? That example, what the piece should be like, a model piece, we call it. So let's go, go ahead to this. We are going to read it. Um, I will not be taking calls um, for creative writing, right? Um, as we do sometimes to give opinions and feedback on a student's piece. Today, we are just going to read, and I'm going to share some of the feedback I may have given um, on the Edmodo class. On Thursday, October 10th at 2019, at approximately 8 a.m., John Carter witnessed two drivers speeding on the Claude Noel Highway. Two the two drivers collided with each other. They got injured and were taken to hospital where they were got treated. Now, as we go along, I'm going to just give um, some feedback, right, paragraph by paragraph, so I will not forget, right? I just want to commend um, this person here. Date, proper date was given as well as use of punctuation here, right? Um, notice they said that John Carter witnessed two drivers speeding on the Claude Noel Highway, so no use of personal pronouns. Two drivers collided, we have a spelling error here, collided, double L rather than L, single L, with each other. They got injured and were taken to the hospital where they got treated, right? So this um, last line here could be improved upon a bit, right? There's a specific uh, format we look at when we are writing a report, be very mindful of the format. It's easy for us to stray into narrative, right? So that line sounds a bit like from a story. While John Carter was on his way to school, he witnessed two drivers speeding in a black car with number plate PDA 9351 and a driver with a red car with number plate PCJ 3125. The driver in the red was gesticulating to the driver in the black car while he overtake him, right? So this paragraph, um, it's fine. Could use some improvement, of course. Right, uh, we are leaving out um, any description with adjectives and so on. Yes, we only think that you said it's a black car, not a, a big black car or anything like that, but just rather say a car and you can give the number plate of that car, that is fine. Right, um, here, minor spelling error, witness two drivers, T double O, right, maybe just a typo. Right, um, so let's go on. The driver in red, in red car collided with the driver in the black car. The hood of the black car was damaged, the door of the red car was crushed in. Again, we just have some minor typos here. Onlookers then took out their phones and called the ambulance. At approximately 30 minutes later, the ambulance arrived on the scene. The men then inspected the scene. 
Afterwards, she took all the men from the cars. Afterwards, she took all the men from the cars. The man in the black car got a broken foot and the driver in the red car got a broken hand. The men then lifted the two drivers off the car into the ambulance. Right, so I'm just going to pause there a second. Um, it said here that afterwards she took out the men. Who is the she? Right, we need a name there, first name and last name. Be very specific with your details in report writing. Right. Um, also, pay attention to your transitional words. Right, there are specific transitions to use in reports. So please use your transitions appropriately rather than saying the man in the black car or onlookers or so on. Right? Use your transitional words to help uh, with a smoother flow. They were then taken to hospital and were treated for the injuries. Right? So taken to the hospital, maybe a uh, typo again there. Right? This was written by Jaden KB. He re requested that we read his submission. So great job, Jaden. Just remember the format for report writing. Right? And look at the feedback that we gave on Edmodo. It's specific to each student's submission. Right? Something that you need to improve on. Uh, we will not comment, you know, uh, some things that you did. I may as, at times say, well, great introductory paragraph because I want you to stick to that style. Other times I may tell you if, if there are irrelevant details or punctuation errors and so on, right? But it's a bit difficult to go through paragraph by paragraph and list all errors, right? But I try to give as much information as I can. So well done. Keep practicing, right? Keep in line with the format of report and practice is the key. Let's go on to another submission here. On Monday, the 21st of March, 2020, I, Cristiano Barrington, witnessed an accident on Woodward, in Woodford, on Woodford Street, Arima, while walking to school. The two drivers, Mr. John James and Mr. Frank Francis, collided at a traffic light at around half past seven in the morning. Right, so this um, introductory paragraph is fine. Notice that it's spelled out 21st. Um, that is fine as well. It doesn't need to be written in numbers. On the day of the accident, Mr. John drove along Sanchez Street and came upon a red traffic light. But instead of stopping, he continued driving. Upon doing so, Mr. Frank Francis, another driver, drove into the right side. Right? Um, on the day of the accident, that is fine, um, but stick to your transitions. Right? Um, firstly, or anything, you know, relating to that is fine as well. Remember, we are trying strictly... So stay with the style of report writing. I know it's a bit difficult, but you can do it, right? Right side of Mr. James' car causing a collision. Motorists stopped driving and assisted the men out of their vehicles. Soon after, Mr. Anthony Abbey, an onlooker, telephoned police officers and paramedics and informed them of the incident. As they arrived, the officers questioned, observed, right? So there should be observers on the accident. After all questions were answered, the paramedics ran tests on Mr. James and Francis. As the paramedics finished, they stated that Mr. James dislocated, dislocated his right shoulder and was given a cast, while Mr. Francis broke the humerus in his left arm and was also given. Right? So we don't need a dash here. Right shoulder by itself is fine as well, given a cast. After that, the paramedics took the men to the Arima General Hospital while the insurance companies removed the cars from the scene of the accident. In conclusion, the motorists continued their daily proceedings. I then continued to walk my walk to school. Right? So this last paragraph here, Cristiano, your conclusion should wrap up your entire report. Right? So you can say, um, you don't have to tell us about the motorists on the road or what you were doing. Right? Um, sum it up saying, you know, what came out as a result of the accident. Right? Um, you don't have to tell us about any other details, right? So this comes as irrelevant details. Stick to your report or the topic only what they are asking you for, right? But overall, Cristiano, keep practicing and each time you will become better. Just remember to stick to the facts and look at your punctuation errors, um, your punctuation use and so on. Right? Another submission here. On Monday 30th, April 2019, at approximately 7.30 a.m., a vehicular accident occurred at the in intersection of Scale Road and Gart Road, Williamsville. The drivers involved were Mr. Singh and Mrs. Young. Right, so that's fine as well. At around 7.15 a.m., Mr. Singh was driving a white, BM, a white BMW PDN 3878 on Scale Road proceedings 
to Princess Tong. Mrs. Young was driving a Suzuki PDX 5555. On reaching the intersection, Mrs. Young proceed, right? So she be proceeded onto C and there should be scale road without stopping. As a result, Mrs. Young's vehicle collided with the BMW in which Mr. Singh was driving. Mrs. Young's car was pushed 10 meters away from the intersection and then off the road into a ditch. Mrs. Young was trapped in the Suzuki in which she was in when the car was pushed back, pushed back, but Mr. Singh was able to exit out of his BMW. Right, so this paragraph here clearly states how the accident occurred. It gives sufficient details about the accident without giving too much description. Right, so let's be very careful um, when you are given details not to make it descriptive. Mr. Singh, as well as onlookers, immediately proceeded to Mrs. Young's assistance. However, no one was able to help Mrs. Young out of the Suzuki. Other drivers stopped to render assistance and this resulted to a restricted traffic flow, right? <clears throat> Maybe this line here um, doesn't need to be here, right? Or telling us about the traffic flow, but it's fine and we can look past that as long as there isn't too much um, description going on. Approximately 15 minutes after the accident, the police and fire officers arrived. The, the firemen used the jaws of life to get Mrs. Young out of the wreckage. Subsequently, the ambulance arrived. The paramedics then examined both drivers. Mr. Singh received a few lacerations on his forehead and some minor injuries on his both arms. Right, so few here and minor injuries here. Not necessary. You can just tell us that there were some injuries, okay, from the explosion of the airbag. However, Mrs. Young had to be taken to the hospital for further treatment. The police officers then wrecked the the boat vehicles or boat vehicles and the firemen removed all debris from the road. Mr. Singh was then accompanied by a police officer to the police station to fill out some file reports. The traffic was then allowed to flow freely again. Right, so um, Xavier Ayong, right, this was a great improvement for Xavier, right, I know when he read the feedback he was really happy uh, with his performance. Now, the only thing Xavier, as I told you, Pay attention to your transitional words, right? More transitions can be used throughout this report. And as I said, with most um, reports given, right, restrict on uh, the use of description, right, which was not too badly done here, right? Not much description was given, right? So, Xavier, just pay attention to transitional words. Let them play a bigger role in your report, right? So, congratulations. Good job. On Monday, the 7th of March, 2020, at approximately 8 o'clock in the morning, right, so apostrophe, apostrophe, sorry, after O, in the morning, a car accident occurred in close proximity to the St. John's Primary School. A student, Tom Jones, right, so we have nouns in opposition, so we are missing commas, of the said school witnessed the accident on his way to school. The persons involved were Mr. Kurt Johnson, the owner of a Lancer, number PDU 1456 and Mrs. Jane, Mrs. Jane Doe, the owner of a Toyota van number PDA 8756, right? So we have, let me just double check this. Uh, we're looking for punctuation here. The owner of a Lancer number plate, number, comma, PDU and so on, right? So just pay attention to your commas. Now this paragraph could have been, um, you know, summed up a bit, right? Um, just sentence construction would have made this paragraph a little more um, concise and straighter to the point, right? But it doesn't stray from what we are asking. Firstly, Mr. Doe was seen emerging from a side street onto the main road. As Mr. Kurt's Lancer approached the side street, Mrs. Doe pulled out onto the road without looking both ways. When Mr. Kurt saw this, he attempted to engage his brake system, and as a result, his vehicle collided while Mrs. Doe hit his Lancer. Immediately after, other drivers stopped and rendered assistance. Mrs. Doe was complaining of severe pain on her left arm and Mr. Kurt had a wound on his right leg. Right? A driver contacted an ambulance from the nearby Princeton Hospital. In about five minutes, they arrived and went to their aid. It was confirmed that they both needed further medical treatment and they were both taken to the hospital. Soon after, a police vehicle pulled up and painted the floor. The officer, Mr. Chin Chung, related the matter to the vice principal, Mr. Sam Smith, about the incident. Finally, Mr. Smith went 
on the PA system and reminded the students about their safety. School commenced promptly at 9 o'clock that same day. Right, so your last line here is irrelevant, right? Um, we, does, we don't need that piece of information. And throughout your report as well, right? Like I said, it could be concise a bit, made a bit shorter, just leaving out a couple sentences or even reconstructing those sentences, right? So um, again, uh, great job by Azra Mohammed, right? So continue working, keep practicing, focus on the feedback that we give on the Edmodo class. That's going to narrow down, you know, what your challenge is in your report writing, right? And you're able, you're going to be able to focus your attention on that and, you know, do some extra work to help you, you know, improve on your writing, right? So we're going to go on to another submission, right? Um, so we're going to read this first paragraph. On Monday, 21st June 2019, at approximately 9 a.m., a car accident occurred at the intersection of Saddle Road and Santa Cruz Road. The accident involved John Smith and James William. Mr. Smith, the driver of a red Honda TGA 2151, you should capitalize this, right, as number plates are usually in capital letters, was proceeding through the intersection in a north-south direction. Mr. Williams, the driver of a blue a Range Rover, again capitalized HIG 2312, was speeding while switching lanes. As a result, Mr. Williams collided with Mrs. Mr. Smith's car. Mr. Smith's car was thrown 10 feet from the accident into the ditch and Mr. Williams' car broke down from the collision. Mr. Williams was able to exit his vehicle, but Mr. Smith was trapped within his car. Right, um, the, now this is not the end of the submission, of course, but it is time for us to take a break for the Maghreb Adhan. But stay with us, guys. When we come back, we are going to continue with the submissions.
Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, guys. Welcome back to See Results. All right, so we're on to creative writing and we are reading some submissions. So we already read the first um, paragraph here of this submission. Just a few comments, right? Um, it's a lot of information given for your introductory paragraph. Remember, uh, your introductory paragraph is essentially should have your date, um, time, location, and the persons involved. Right, so it should not run into the accident itself, right? That is the body of your report, right? So, um, so far we need to work on paragraphing, right? And knowing where to put which information, right? So maybe this um, second paragraph could have started from as a result, right? So a bit too much information given in this first or introductory paragraph, right? Let's continue. Passers-by called the emergency services and some of them attempted to assist Mr. Smith but were unsuccessful getting Mr. Smith out of his car. This disrupted the flow of traffic. Ten minutes later, comma, the firemen and, and police arrived, right? So a bit of a typo here. The firemen used the jaws of life to free Mr. Smith. The policeman redirected the flow of traffic. Five minutes later, an ambulance. Um, so again, we need a punctuation, but good use of transition, right? Pay attention to that. Ambulance arrived. The paramedics inspected the two drivers. Mr. Williams received a minor, received a minor burn, so that should be Mr. Williams received minor burns, um, burn, sorry, on his hands from the airbag explosion. Mr. Smith remained unconscious and had to be taken to the hospital for further treatment. Following this, firemen removed the wreckage, the wreckage, comma, or oh, that should be removed the wreckage debris from the roadway. The policemen escorted Mr. Williams to the police station for a detailed report about the incident. The flow of traffic was able to flow freely again by Mark Lashley. Right, so a few things here, Mark. Um, just work on paragraphing, right? Um, that's, that's about it. Too much information was given on the first paragraph. Could have gone on to a second. Um, secondly, I want to commend him for using you know, um, proper transitions, right? So good use of transitional words as well, and phrases, of course. Right, and this introduction, this conclusion, sorry, um, was well done as well. Right, it recap um, what happened in the report. Right, so oh, not recap, but also help us understand, you know, what happened from the accident. Right, so good job, Mark Lashley. All right, let's go on to another submission. On Monday, seventh January, twenty ten, I, Jasmine Rahman, not Jasmine, sorry, Jasim Rahman. A stand of five people of the Arima Boys Roman Catholic School witnessed two car collision at approximately 7.15 in the morning. The accident took place on Church Street, Arima. Right, so a couple things here. Right, um, you notice person said, I, Jasim Rahman. While we are refraining from personal pronouns such as we and I, right, and our and us, um, I just want to remind you, if you are using the personal pronoun I, you should have a comma after that I, okay? A standard five people of the Arima Boys Roman Catholic School witnessed two car, a two-car collision, right, at approximately 7.15 in the morning. Uh, the accident took place on Church Street, Arima. But other than that, your introductory paragraph has all the essential information. The incident occurred while I stood on the pedestrian pavement awaiting to use the zebra crossing. Right, so this comma here is not needed. At the corner of Church and Faith Street, a blue Nissan Tida license plate PCD 3898, driven by Mr. Jason Jagan, a standard two teacher of the Arima Boys Roman Catholic School, collided with a, right, so again, let's pay attention to personal pronouns. I just want to point out something about that to the end. Collided with a registered yellow school bus, right, so um, probably don't need the words registered or yellow. I understand the point you are trying to make. You want us to understand that the, the school bus is, in fact, registered, right, um, to transport students and so on, but it's not necessary for the report, okay? License plate, uh, TDM 9465, driven by Mrs. Miss Gail Mohammed. Mr. Jagan was exiting the drop-off gate located at the southern end of the school compound onto Church Street. Right, so Mr. Jagan was exiting the drop-off gate uh, we don't need a comma there, located on the southern end of the school compound onto Church Street, right? So just pay attention to the use of commas. If you are having a little difficulty with you know, how to use commas, go back to um, the ELA lesson on punctuation use, right? That would have been in our um, initial videos when we just started, right? At this instance, good. The driver of the 12-seater bus abruptly stopped it to drop off 
is second year pupil, right? We don't need to know it's a 12 seater bus, right? Um, that piece of information there, a uh, bit descriptive, right? You can just say drive off the bus, abruptly stop to drop off a second year pupil, right? We don't need a comma here again. Joel Peters. Mr. Jagan's blue cedar, we don't need blue, collided with the back of the yellow bus. Ms. Mohammed immediately stopped and exited her vehicle and comforted jo, Joel, who was visibly shaken, right? So this here shows emotion, right? Um, as you guys know, we don't use emotion in report writing. He was then escorted to the school compound. She, was the, she then was seen on her phone and retrieved some documents from her vehicle. Mr. Jagan approached Ms. Mohammed and there was an exchange of words, right? So this piece of information here, it's not clear why you gave that, right? She, then, she was then seen on her phone and then retrieved some documents, right? Now, what does the phone tell us, right? So just, um, if you are given that piece of information, make sure it's relevant and very specific, right? So in other words, don't beat around the bush, right? Don't give too much details. It was an exchange of words. At approximately 7.45 in the morning, a police vehicle arrived at the scene of the accident. Sergeant Abraham Thomas of the Arima Police Station exited his marked police vehicle and spoke to the two adults, right? We don't need the word marked there. He then escorted them both to the Arima Police Station to make an incident report. In conclusion, Mr. Jagan has to pay for the damages done to Ms. Mohammed's 12-seater bus, right? So, Jassim Rahman... This was a good submission, right? Just be mindful of the feedback that we give and some of the areas that you need to pay attention in order to improve upon, right? So let's continue working, right? On Monday, so apparently um, a lot of students gave the submission on a Monday for some reason, right? And, or they just randomly chose the word Monday or the day Monday and everyone did so. On Monday, 5th January 2011, at 8 a.m., a vehicular accident occurred at the Ramsey Junction opposite the Rosebud Primary School, right? So we don't need the here at Ramsey Junction opposite the Rosebud Primary School. The people involved in the accidents were Bailey Jackson and Mayor Smith, right? Or it could have said um, a vehicular accident occurred at Ramsey Junction opposite the Rosebud Primary School, and you could have said the persons involved, right? Um, at the same time, persons involved were, and you list the person's name. But this is fine as well, okay? Bailey Jackson was entering the junction while Mia Smith was also entering the junction from a different side. Bailey's car then collided into Mia's car. Bailey came out, Bailey came out of his car and so did Mia. They both checked their cars to see the damage done. The front of the two cars was slammed together, right? While awaiting the, awaiting the police, comma, Bailey and Mia contacted the insurance companies. The two cars were blocking both vehicular and pedestrian traffic from going and coming into the junction, right? So we don't need this comma here again. At the side of the road were seven students and three teachers waiting to go to the school. Neighbors came down from their homes to see what had happened, right? So let me just point out at this time, Right. At the side of the road uh, were seven students and teachers. That is irrelevant information. Right? Um, we are given unnecessary description of the um, accident here. Right? So this piece of information is not needed. Right? So it, it will, the report will function fine with all, the, with all those details. Right? Um, also, neighbors, B-O-U-R-S. When the police arrived, at, not that it is incorrect. Right? I'm just pointing that out. When the police arrived at the scene, they came with a tow truck to remove, to remove both vehicles, right? So that should be to remove both vehicles and took them to the mechanic. Emergency medical technicians also came to check Bailey and Mia to, to be sure that they had not sustained any injuries from the crash. Mia had a slight concussion and was taken to the hospital. The car took two hours, so that should be T-double-O hours, to be removed. So the children and teachers who were waiting were allowed to go back home, right? Again, that piece of information is not needed. Bailey was ordered to pay Mia's insurance and also had to pay a fee of $250 for driving while on the phone, right? So that was a good conclusion there, written by Candice Bishop, right? Candice, so just be um, mindful of the feedback that we gave throughout. Be careful with your punctuation. Um... Look at relevant details, stick to facts only, right? Um, as we know, no emotions must be given, no opinions must be given, no descriptions must be used, 
right? With report writing, um, it's a very formal style of writing, and you have to maintain the formal tone throughout your, your report. And now, how can you do that? You have to know what is essential for report writing. Now, you can go back to our videos, just as I have been saying throughout, um, you know, this, vid this um, session and the last with ELA, go back to our videos because the content is there for you. We are no longer going in depth with content as we have already covered all the content necessary. So now it's just for you to recap or reinforce, go back to those videos and let that, you know, um, be a source of help for you, right? So um, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, actually, I'm not going to come back. So Jazz is going to join you and he's going to continue to read some submissions. It has indeed been my pleasure being in your company, guys, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Stay tuned for Say Jazz. We'll be right back after these messages. Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to See Results on IBN TV, as well as the IBN TV Facebook page and the See Results Facebook page. I am Sir Ijaz, and I'll be continuing to read some of your submissions from last week's assignment, which was a report writing, expository um, writing piece that had to do with a car accident that you witnessed while on your way to school. Okay, so let's uh, begin with this piece that I have behind me here. On Tuesday, 14th December 2019, at around 8.30 a.m., a vehicular accident occurred at the intersection of Rudder Drive and Elizabeth Drive, Waterloo. The drivers involved were Ms. M. Joseph and Ms. Cameron Lewis. All right, and we know that when we are writing these reports, it is always preferable to give the first and the surnames of the people that are involved. So this is, this is well done. The time of the incident is given as well as the date. At around 8.30 a.m., Ms. Joseph was driving a Grey Benz PDU 1354 on Elizabeth Drive while proceeding Williamsville. All right, so we're missing there, proceeding to uh, Mr. Lewis was driving a red Almera. So there's a spelling error there, but this is a proper noun, so that might be forgivable. Um, PBE 6689 on Rudder Drive. On reaching the intersection, Mr. Lewis proceeded on to Elizabeth Drive without stopping. As a result, the vehicle that he was driving collided with the Benz Ms. Joseph was driving. All right, so we've already established um, the drivers and what vehicles they were driving, so you don't need to necessarily repeat all of that information again when describing the collision. Mr. Lewis's car was pushed eight meters away from the intersection and off the road and into a ditch. Mr. Lewis was trapped in the Almera, but Ms. Joseph was able to exit the Benz. Ms. Joseph, as well as other onlookers, immediately proceeded to Mr. Lewis's assistance. However, no one was able to get him out of the Almera. Other drivers stopped to render assistance, and this resulted in a restricted traffic flu. Fifteen minutes later, the police and fire officers arrived. The firemen used the jaws of life to get Mr. Lewis out of the wreckage. Subsequently, the ambulance arrived. All right, so we see a use of a transition word there. The paramedics then examined both drivers. Miss Joseph received a few lacerations on her forehead. Right, lacerations means cuts. All right, so that's a nice 
um, formal way of stating it, and of course we want to use as much formal language. In fact, it should all be formal language in our report. Ms. Joseph re received a few lacerations on her forehead and some minor burns on her arms from the airbag explosion. However, Mr. Lewis had to be taken to the San Fernando General Hospital for further treatment. The police officers then wrecked both vehicles and the firemen removed all debris off the road. Ms. Joseph then accompanied the police officers to the police station to file a report. The traffic was then allowed to flow freely again. All right, so, you know, when we are describing actually the, um, the accident itself, so the little extra bit there about the traffic being allowed to flow freely again, it's not um, entirely incorrect, but, you know, we, we didn't need necessarily to add in that extra bit there. But overall, this was a very, very well done report. Uh, the tone of it was, you know, it was, it was formal. I uh, didn't really feel as though the, the writer, the author, as we often see, slip into, you know, narrative writing mode too much. At any given point in time, there were just a couple instances where perhaps um, one or two details were repeated again, especially in the beginning there when we repeated the drivers and the colors and so on of the vehicle for a second time, or the make of the vehicle, I should say. So um, overall, that is very well done, Azaria. Uh, nicely done. So what is our second submission? Let's move on. On Thursday, 26 March 2020, at approximately 7.30 in the morning, I was on my way to school when a vehicular accident occurred. All right. So this begins here yeah, in, a, in a somewhat narrative style or, or tone as though you are telling a story. Good. And the reason for that is because we are using here the, the personal pronouns, right? So we know that sometimes you have to use it. You will be you might be in a position where you have to use it once or twice, but it's always better to avoid using those personal pronouns to keep it as formal and as impartial as, pro as possible when you're giving these reports, okay? So the incident occurred at the corner of Abercrombie and Smart Street, St. Joseph. So at the corner of Abercrombie and Smart Street, St. Joseph, the drivers of PBZ 2945, Mr. Jax Jameson, should be another comma there, and PDM 3285, Mr. Jonathan Mangal, were both involved in the collision. Both drivers sustained major injuries. On the date in question, Mr. Mangal was awaiting the green light across the intersection. As soon as the light turned green, he began to accelerate. All right. So when he did, Mr. Jameson broke the red light on the opposite side of the intersection at a speed of approximately 70 miles per hour, both vehicles collided. Okay, so here again, we seem to be um, a little bit writing in the style, the narrative sort of writing style. So as soon as the light turned green, he began to accelerate. Okay, so we are basically describing here a situation where um, two drivers basically crossed an intersection uh, simultaneously because one proceeded uh, to, through the green light as they should and one broke the light and they collided, right? So we need to just basically state that um, in, a, in, a, in a very, I don't want to use the word flat, but just a factual sort of professional maybe is the word tone. Uh, so you're putting yourself in the place basically of a, of a reporter. So we just state what happened um, and no more than that, right? So, as soon as the light turned green, he began to accelerate. That is, that is a sentence that you would get or you would find in a narrative style uh, piece of writing. So, both vehicles collided. Mr. Jameson's vehicle remained to the center of the intersection while Mr. Mangle's vehicle was sent spiraling into nearby bushes. Again, the, the style of writing here could be modified a bit to not sound so much like a story being told, all right? It's a report of, um, some in, of an incident that took place. We want to be as factual, as impartial, and we want to have, you know, very little to no um, emotionally charged type of language being used, all right? Anything that is overly dramatic or anything like that, we don't want to get that in our report. 
Okay, so the vehicle remained to the center of the intersection while Mr. Mango's vehicle was sent spiraling into nearby bushes. All right, we can modify that a bit. Immediately, passers-by went to the aid of the drivers while simultaneously, one passerby, Johan Singh Rajkumar, called the police department via his cellular device and reported what had transpired. All right, so again, um, it, could be, it could have been stated that you know, a passerby contacted or, or notified the police department. No need to say there via his cellular device. Um, the passerby used the passersby used sticks and stones in an attempt to pry open the driver's side of Mr. Jameson's vehicle. Approximately 15 minutes after the call, dispatchers from the Tunapuna Fire Department, along with dispatchers from the Tunapuna Police Station and Mount Hope Central Hospital, arrived on the scene. Without delay, the firemen utilized the jaws of life to cut off the driver's side of Mr. Jameson's vehicle. Again, we just want to be state things here factually. So uh, the use or the inclusion of without delay there does seem to give it a bit of a, you know, more dramatic effect. All right. And we don't want to evoke any sort of, we shouldn't be trying to invoke any sort of emotion in the reader when we are writing reports. All right. Um, so without delay, the firemen utilized the jaws of life to cut off the driver's side of Mr. Jameson's vehicle, while concurrently the police officers directed the flow of traffic. Both men were taken out of their vehicles and assessed by the paramedics. Upon further investigation, it was note discovered that Mr. Jameson had sustained a broken leg and Mr. Mangal had sustained a broken arm. Both men were immediately rushed to the Mount Hope General Hospital, where they received further treatment. The police wrecker was summoned by the commanding officer, Mr. Bryson Waits. They arrived approximately 15 minutes after the call and removed the vehicles from the road. All right, so look at these sentences here. The police wrecker was summoned by the commanding officer, Mr. Bryson Waits. That's, that's a, a very, you know, that is a formal sentence. Nothing there emotionally charged, no additional details, you know, for instance, saying that the police record was summoned via radio and all of that, right? Just a factual statement of the event. The police record was summoned by the commanding officer, Mr. Brian Waits. They arrived approximately 15 minutes after the call and removed the vehicles from the road. As a result of the accident, many pupils of various schools arrived late and parents arrived late to their places of work. All right, and again, we are just here to describe exactly what it is took place in the accident, not necessarily the consequences of the accident, all right? So I understand um, we are trying to give a, a report that is as complete as possible, so we want to include as, as much detail as we can, searching for those marks, but we don't also want to fall into the error of writing, you know, too much details that makes it... Um, less of a report and more of a story, right? Because we are aiming here to write, you know, in the expository style or in the report style of writing. But overall, I think that this was a, a quite good report by Dominique Brown. So Dominique, I want to say, you know, congrats to you. And of course, to I believe it was Azaria's report that I read before. And we are going to read uh, yet another report, all right? So let's go. On Friday, 3rd October 2017, I witnessed a vehicular accident on my way to school, which transpired on the Uriah Butler Highway at approximately 8.15 a.m. So on Friday, 3rd of October 2017, uh, there was an accident, uh, or an accident occurred on the Uriah Butler Highway at approximately 8.15 a.m., right? We don't need to see. I witnessed a vehicular accident on my way to school there. When we do that, we are giving the impression that we are, you know, we are, we are, we are with friends and we are just telling a story, you know, an, an opinionated uh, interpretation or, or telling of the events. We want to keep it as impartial, as unemotional, as unopinionated as possible, right? So the drivers were identified as 21-year-old John Doe driving a blue Ford pickup truck, registration number PDX1234, and 32-year-old Sam Locke driving a white Toyota car, registration number PDY4596. 
both vehicles were traveling or traversing, sorry, in a northerly direction. Okay, so that's a nice uh, use of language there, but the word northerly does not need to be capitalized, right? It is an adverb. So tra traversing in a northerly direction when the driver of the Ford pickup lost control of his vehicle and swerved into the rear of the adjacent Toyota where the collision leftwardly headed into a ditch. The driver of the Toyota whom suffered minor injuries, so that should be who suffered minor injuries, to his head exited his vehicle to assess the damages incurred. He subsequently proceeded to confront the other driver where he found him unconscious and bleeding. All right, so um, it could have just been said that uh, one of the drivers uh, sustained injuries and was unconscious and bleeding stating that he subsequently proceeded to confront the other driver, all right? We have to find a different way to state that if the confrontation is going to be, you know, a very important element of the report of the incidents transpiring. Uh, we need to say it in a way that it doesn't sound so story-like, right? As a result, he phoned an ambulance. So and the ambulance was contacted right, uh, or the emergency medical services was contacted, something like that. At exactly 8.30 a.m., the paramedics arrived on the scene accompanied by policemen along with the fire brigade. The firemen procured the driver of the Ford pickup out of his vehicle where he was then escorted to the nearest health care facility. Meanwhile, two wreckers removed the crash vehicles from the scene and policemen interrogated several witnesses to find the cause of the accident, okay? Um, upon investigation, it was found that the accident was due to Mr. John texting while driving. All right, that is not necessarily a detail that has to be included. Um, Mr. John suffered a broken leg and several bruises. After Mr. John recovered, he was fined $5,000 for texting while driving. Okay, we don't need to capitalize the $5,000 for texting while driving. Um, and again, after Mr. John recovered, we are, we are uh, reporting on an incident that you witnessed on your way to school, okay? So all of, this, all of these things, the outcomes later on about the fine and so on, is not something that you can necessarily witness while on your way to school. These things will take time, okay? We understand that you're trying to make it as interesting to the reader as possible but we don't need to make it um, you know, too dramatic or anything like that. Again, it is a report, all right? So $10,000 uh, to compensate damages caused to Mr. Locke's vehicle and his driver's permit was suspended for a period of six months. And this was submitted by Sachin Ramdani. You know, overall, a pretty good report, but again, there are some elements there, especially this final paragraph, a lot of details that would not be considered uh, necessary or relevant for the report. And again, if you put yourself in the scenario mentally, right, you know that you won't be able to know all of these things just by witnessing an accident on the way to school about who was charged and how much they were charged and so on, right? So overall though, very well done. All of the writers that I've read uh, today, they did, they did pretty well. Of course, there is room for improvement. And as Ms. Nyla said, you can visit our YouTube channel, right? See results on youtube.com. Or you can look at the videos on our Facebook page under the videos tab. But the YouTube channel has um, all of our videos very nicely annotated and described in the description boxes. So you can go look, look up those videos and, you know, benefit from it and apply it to your writing. Okay, so... On that note, basically, guys, uh, this will be our final week of C results for this academic year. All right, our exam was supposed to have been on the, on the 2nd of April, you know, but unfortunately, we all know the situation and the scenario. We have been um, on the air with you since November, all right, so we are approaching almost five months of C results being on air. And within this period of time, we were able to cover quite a lot, you know, an extensive piece of the, the curriculum for both, for all, sorry, math, English, language arts, as well as creative writing. But don't worry, we are going to remain in contact with you. You can continue to reach us on the Facebook page. You can continue 
to reach us on our Edmodo class. All right, so for those of you who are not yet on our Edmodo class, you visit edmodo.com or you download the app and you enter the code that you see on your screen there, access code 6KJQ3Y, and we will continue to post quizzes in both math and English language arts, as well as um, intermittently, we may give some creative writing assignments up until the, t the time that the exam is given. And remember, none of us knows exactly when that exam is going to be given, all right? But like we said, on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, there will be 54, you know, God willing, when we do our final episode on Thursday, and we invite all of you to tune in because we have something very special planned for the second hour of the um, final episode on Thursday. That is for this season, right? You can find all of our 54 episodes. That's 108 hours of C results content that you can use as a study guide, as something to use for revision. It's packed with examples. It's packed with questions that you can pause. You can do the questions, all right? And over the next few weeks, we will continue or we will start re-releasing the quizzes that, that went along with all of those episodes um, in all of the weeks prior. So, you know, we have a lot of things for you that, are, that is going to be uh, launched. You're going to get to redo all of those quizzes. If you're new to see results, you'll just have to simply go to the YouTube channel and view the videos for that week in question, and then you can take the quizzes. It's going to remain open possibly all the way until um, summer. We're going to just leave the deadline open on all of those past quizzes. And we will continue to supply you with new quizzes every week. All right. So make sure and join us on Thursday for the season finale, basically, of um, C results. And again, we do look forward to joining you in the next academic year with our next crop of students who will be preparing for the exam. Some of you are in standard four and you will be continuing your journey with us. But again, all of our videos are there. They are quite extensive and we will continue to provide you with quizzes weekly. And Ms. Nyla and I will be there to assist you on the Edmodo page should you have any questions as well as our Facebook page and so on, all right? So with that said, I'm gonna be leaving you today, but on Thursday we have mathematics again. And we do have a very special item for you in the second half of the program where we usually have creative writing. You know, we're going to do something a little bit different. So do tune in and do join us on Thursday. I have been Seijaz. It's been my pleasure as usual being with you. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum.